So I have a theory about this watch. It was designed and greenlit by a person who was very nearing their retirement and decided to go out with a bang. And the two questions you have to ask yourself is, what were they thinking, A, and B, were they even thinking when it came to making this piece? Now, of course, it was released in the early 2000s and is considered a very collectible piece nowadays, very rare watch in the Rolex family. But we look at it and we kind of think to ourselves, what was going on at the time? Was this just for the sake of fun? Was it them trying to experiment with some new ideas? Or was it just on a request that they decided to fulfill? The title of this discussion is The Ugliest Rolex Ever Made. And I think I would like to stand by that statement because it really is the most bizarre looking piece I've ever come across in the Rolex family. And it's worth discussing because there are a few elements that are interesting, that have been executed well, that's, uh, that's worth looking at. Now, of course, we can all agree that this watch only appeals to a certain type of person. And a few people can wear this watch and pull it off well. We know that producer Michael is someone who loves this piece. When I see it, I think 70s Led Zeppelin uh, Robert Plant on the stage wearing a watch like this. I think it's the pattern and everything else. But it just it just baffles my mind when I look at it and think why the why the leopard skin pattern? Why this choice? What was the the, the thought process that went into this? On one side you look at it and think well it looks so cheap. You know the the whole leopard print idea is such an archaic uh, motif that was used it has been used in fashion for for decades. But it's died off in recent years. I think we can all agree with that. Maybe a style like this can be brought back in the future, but as it stands on a watch, on a Rolex, a company that is now extremely conservative with the way they produce their designs. Of course, they have a few exceptions like the Rainbow Daytonas. That'll be discussed in future videos. But this watch just looks bizarre in every way, shape and form. So let's just have a look at the design in a few places. There are some parts that really catch my attention well. Um, we can look at the cons first, I think. Let's begin by looking at the leather strap. It's a calfskin strap that has a leopard print on top of it. And what really puts it off, and I think what cheapens it visually, is that all of the prints are symmetrical. Everything is down the center. You could divide the watch in half and you would have the same print on either side. And that actually cheapens the layout. Because when you have that, it almost feels like it was produced by a machine and it's not something more natural. If you want to get the feel of something natural across, asymmetry is your best bet, especially working with textures and patterns. So seeing this format of everything being down the line symmetrical, it looks like it was just copied and pasted over and over again. And it kind of affects the overall image of the watch. And I can't believe that I'm actually criticizing the print of a leopard skin on a, on a leather strap. It's just, it's just ridiculous. Uh, we go to the end links on the watch. It's an element that's always piqued my interest in the watch. The way that the end link has been integrated with the leather strap. Of course, this was done in the early 2000s, so they were still experimenting with ways. But the way they approached it and the way they've attached it, it looks very interesting. It's almost like an extrusion above the strap. It gives the watch some extra texture on top of the case. So it's quite an appealing look. And we see the balance between the subdials and the case, and it's quite an interesting parity. And then we get to the parts that really divide up the watch, and it's the diamonds and the sapphires and everything else. I haven't been one to discuss diamonds and and the whole icing effect that are done to watches. I will do in future videos as well. But this is where I think the watch loses me and I'm sure a lot of other people. But it also attracts people, so it's, it's very juxtaposing in that way. I think the watch's design would have benefited more without the diamonds on the end links and on the dial. The one part of the watch that really is fascinating to me is the way that the stones have been set in the bezel. I mean, it is a, it's a work of art. There's no other way to put it. But I think that's where it should have stopped. If you had kept the leopard print and all of that styling and kept the sapphires in the bezel, left the diamonds off and just stuck with batons or numerals, the watch would have looked a little bit more appealing, a little bit simpler. In this current format with these baguettes, I think that's what you would call them, around the dial. It just looks a little bit too 
incongruent. And I guess that's the best way we could describe the design of this watch. It is incongruent in many ways. The colors are all over the place. The, the choice of adding diamonds, but then having numerals inside the dial as well. The, the contrast between the orange, yellow, gold, black, and then white diamonds on top. It's just very excessive. And of course, that's pretty much the language that they're going with. They're trying to be excessive with this watch. And for that purpose, they're doing extremely well. Another thing that I like about the dial, and I know I criticized the symmetry of the pattern on the watch, the way the dial is almost gradiented with the way its colors have been used. In the center, it's a very deep red orange color. And as it spans outwards, we see a more yellow finish to the outside of the surface. It's, it's quite an interesting look. And without the leopard skin pattern inside the dial, the watch could look very nice. It would have a gradient sunburst sort of effect and it would pair very nicely with the orange of the bezel. When we compare this watch to the likes of other sports Daytonas, say, even the gold Daytonas, the rainbow Daytonas, this watch is on another level. It is just insane. Speaking from a design perspective, these combinations, they don't work. Speaking from a jewelry perspective, there is something to it. And more importantly, if you're in the art space, the more contemporary creative sort of avenues, you know, fine art sort of realms, you could probably appreciate this watch for what it's trying to represent. But I see this and I think the first word that comes to mind, and it's, it's quite ironic, I consider this watch to look cheap in appearance, which is sad actually because we know that these are extremely sought after and expensive pieces but again i'll reiterate the one part that really breaks my interest and attention is the way that the leopard skin print is symmetrical on both sides it really cheapens the whole image of the watch and it would look so much better i think if the printing was unique to the piece itself so the patterns would change dependent on the material it was used on. Symmetry is your worst enemy when it comes to creating a material that is trying to replicate something in the natural world. That's a hat tip for anyone in the creative space. So I'd be interested in hearing your thoughts about this piece because I consider it so jarring in many ways. If it was me and I had the opportunity to adjust this piece in a few places, I would get rid of the diamonds, keep the bezel with the orange finish, that looks great, clean up the dial, make it a bit simpler, get rid of the leopard skin patterning on the dial, keep the leopard skin on the strap, make it asymmetrical and make it a bit more legible. Because at the end of the day, you're using this watch to tell the time, technically. And the way it's positioned at the moment, it's just so illegible. And in many ways, it very much goes against what the Daytona represented back in the day. We know that Daytonas are now in an echelon where they're considered as sports watches on one side and these high fashion luxury dress watches on the other. But this amalgamation of both sides really doesn't do the watch any justice at all. But this watch, the Daytona SACO, is made for a certain individual and it is definitely not trying to be conservative. It is a statement piece that anyone could wear and pretty much rock out. It's the sort of watch that you would wear and it would attract a lot of attention. It would add a very different character to your attire, your apparel. This watch is just, it just baffles me in so many ways. And surprisingly, Rolex hasn't released anything as controversial as this since then. So the question is, will they ever do it again? I'm on the fence about that. I think they've reached a point now where they are trying to be as conservative as possible with their pieces, while at the same time releasing a few additions like the rainbows that we will look at soon. This watch is a character of its time. It is definitely a watch from the early 2000s. It looks like something made in the 70s. And as an amalgamation between a sports watch and a high fashion dress watch, it's a clash. Let's put it that way.